Hello students, welcome to CEFR 1119 English Language SPM Quick Revision Series with Ms. Prema. In this video, we will look briefly into the CEFR SPM 1119-3 speaking paper. This introduction guide video will explain about the speaking papers assessment and format. This video sharing will also be very helpful and useful for both government and private 2021 SPM candidates. To begin with, let's understand the sitting position during the speaking test. As shown on the screen, the candidates will be seated in pair, side by side, facing the interlocutor. And at some reasonable distance, the assessor will be seated to one side near enough to see and hear everything clearly in order to evaluate the candidates individually. The assessor is the teacher from a nearby school or centre, whereas the interlocutor is the teacher who teaches in the candidate's school or centre. The interlocutor will use a stopwatch to monitor the assessment timing throughout the speaking test. Therefore, candidates are advised to try practicing speaking test using any model or sample speaking question. Keep track on your speaking timing and be prepared before the test. The interlocutor manages the interaction during the test by asking questions and giving instructions and assesses the candidates using the overall spoken performance assessment scale. On the other hand, the assessor assesses the candidates' performance using the analytical assessment skills like grammar, vocabulary, and communicative competence. The details about the assessment skills will be explained later. Let's look at the image on the screen for a clearer understanding about the sitting position. The candidates will be seated in pair side by side, facing the interlocutor, and at some reasonable distance, the assessor will be seated to one side, near enough to see and hear everything clearly in order to assess the candidate's performance level individually. Remember, papers, pens, or pencils are not allowed into the assessment room. The test duration is approximately for 30 minutes. The format of the test is paired test, where two candidates will take the test together. There are three parts for the candidates to answer and speak about. The first part is an interview, followed by part two, the individual long term based on text or verbal prompt, and finally part three, the discussion based on mind map stimulus and further discussion task. The total marks for speaking paper is 24 marks and it will be 25% of the overall grade. The SPM speaking test 
is designed for B1, B2, CEFR performance level. Therefore, it is advisable for students to respond and speak according to the task requirements confidently. Now, let's see how candidates move during the speaking test. Remember to follow the teacher on duties instructions to avoid unnecessary issues and confusion. This is how the SPM speaking test candidates will be moving during the test. Before the test begins, candidates will be asked to sit at the waiting room for about five minutes for registration and to listen to a short briefing by the interlocutor to explain about the test. Then, the candidates will be called to the assessment room by pairs. Each pair will be tested approximately for 13 minutes. After the test, the candidates who have completed the speaking test will be asked to wait at the quarantine room. Remember students to obey the instructions given by the teacher on duty for a smoother test flow. Let's look at the speaking assessment process by sessions. Speaking test will begin punctually based on the examination schedule for all three days. Therefore, candidates are required to be at school as early as possible and be punctual. For first session or Sidang Satu, the briefing will be between 7.50 a.m and 7.55 a.m. at the waiting room. The second session briefing will be between 10.35 a.m. and 10.40 a.m., followed by the third session, which will begin after the lunch break, and the third session briefing will be between 2.05 a.m. and 2.10 p.m. This time arrangement will be the same for all three days of speaking assessment. Therefore, be punctual, prepared, and most importantly, always be confident and optimistic because you can do it. Now, let's see what will happen after the five minutes interlocutors briefing at the waiting room. The teacher on duty at the waiting room will organize the candidates in pairs and send the candidates by pair to the assessment room accordingly. Each speaking test session will be for two hours. The first assessment session will be between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. The second assessment session will be between 10.45 a.m. and 12.45 p.m. The third assessment session will begin after the lunch break at 2.15 p.m. and end at 4.15 p.m. Each pair will be assessed in the assessment room for about 15 minutes during the speaking test, two minutes for the preparation and 13 minutes for the assessment. This means eight pairs will be tested during each two hour session. This time arrangement will be the same for all three days of speaking assessment. Therefore, please be punctual, prepared and most importantly, Speak confidently.
After completing the speaking test, candidates will move to the quarantine room and wait. Candidates are not allowed to leave the center until they are informed by the teacher on duty. There is a 30 minutes break between the sessions. So, please follow and obey the instruction by the teacher on duty. You must cooperate. Session 1 and 2 candidates are only allowed to leave the centre after 2 p.m. once the third session begins in the afternoon. Until then, the candidates are required to be in the quarantine rooms. Remember to always obey what the teacher on duty says and instructs, as those are the rules set for the SPM speaking assessment. So, be nice, polite and respectful with the teachers on duty. However, third session candidates are allowed to leave the centre after their assessment. They are not required to wait at the quarantine room. Boys and girls, let's look at the do's and the don'ts during the speaking test. First, candidates must remember the followings. They are advised to read through the instructions stated and listed in the 2021 SPM examination schedule. Second, candidates are not allowed to bring their mobile phones or any gadgets into the assessment room. Third, candidates are also not allowed to bring papers, notes, pens, pencils or bags into the rooms during the test. Fourth, school candidates must wear their school uniforms during the test. For private candidates, you must ensure that you are neatly dressed. Fifth, candidates are required to bring their identification cards and exam slips for the test. Sixth, candidates must always follow and obey the rules set at the centre. Finally, always remember to inform the teacher on duty if you face any issues or in need of assistance. Boys and girls, now we will look into the test timing and the parts in the speaking test. The speaking test for each pair is approximately for 13 minutes. The timing of the test begins when the interlocutor greets the candidates at the beginning of part one. Part one is an interview session where Candidates respond individually. The duration is about 3 to 4 minutes. For part 2, the duration is around 3 to 4 minutes. Part 2 is an individual long-term task. And for part three, the duration is around four to five minutes. Part three consists of discussion task and further discussion task. Let's dwell deeper about the speaking test task format. In part one, the teacher interviews the candidates individually 
although they are seated in pair. Part 1 has two phases. First phase is a general introduction. The questions are basically about the candidate's background. And in second phase, the task is focused on a specific theme like daily routine. In both phases in part one, teacher interviews the candidates and candidates respond to the questions. The teacher elicits personal information from both candidates by asking a variety of questions. Each candidate is given time to expand on their answers. Part two task is an individual long-term task. The duration for each candidate to speak is around one to two minutes. Then, followed by a listening candidate responding to a question for about 20 to 30 seconds, the interlocutor will ask candidate A to speak for about one minute on a particular topic or theme related to own experiences. Candidate A will speak based on written input in the form of general instructions and content-focused prompts provided in students' test booklet. After that, candidate B will be given a short response question on their partner's task topic. Then, candidate B will repeat with a different task or team, and candidate A will respond to a short question on candidate B's task or team. Part 3 task consists of discussion task and further discussion task. Total duration for part 3 is 4 to 5 minutes. In part 3, both candidates will talk to each other to discuss based on the mind map information provided in the student's booklet. 20 seconds will be given to the candidates to prepare. Then, both candidates will discuss on the information given for about two minutes based on the mind map. After that, the candidates will be given one minute to make a decision together on which is the best idea based on the mind map. Next, the candidates are given one further minute to answer the final joint question. Candidates will give opinions on the related final joint questions. These are the details about all the parts in the speaking test and try to understand them and do the best during the speaking test. Now, let's further look into the candidate's expected language outputs during the speaking test. In part one, candidates need to respond to questions. Phase one is to lead to short responses. Whereas, phase two is where longer responses are anticipated. The main purpose is to ensure fairness to all candidates rather than to have a completely natural conversation. The language function expected from candidates in part one are giving factual information about self or biodata, talking about present circumstances or situations, expressing opinions, explaining and giving reasons, talking about future plans, or talking about past experiences. In part two, 
candidates need to sustain a long-term task. The communication features in part two are clarity of message, organization of language and ideas, accuracy, and appropriacy of linguistic resources. The language functions expected from candidates in part two are giving information of a non-personal kind, here, candidates should be able to talk about past, present, or future experiences by explaining and giving reasons. Candidates, too, should be able to express and justify opinions, describe people, places, and situations, or name personal characteristics, objects, and activities based on the task given. Finally, in part 3, candidates will need to take turn and respond appropriately by negotiating, initiating or developing ideas based on the given topic. The language functions expected from candidates in part 3 are explaining and giving reasons, exchanging information and opinions like likes, dislikes, preference, experiences, habits, and etc. Other language functions expected from the candidates are expressing and justifying opinions, negotiating agreement, making and responding to suggestions, or discussing about alternatives. These are the output features expected from the candidates during the test for all the three parts. Try to understand well and do the best during the speaking test. Let me share about the speaking test assessment criteria. Now, let's look into the details about the assessment skills. Interlocutor will be awarding maximum of six marks for overall spoken performance skill, whereas assessor will award the candidates based on three different assessment skills like grammar, six marks, vocabulary, six marks, and finally, Communicative competence, six marks. The interlocutor will award the maximum of six marks for overall spoken performance. For this, candidates are expected to understand questions and instructions directed at him or her with is. Next, candidates should be able to ask and respond to questions and suggestions, maintain and develop the interaction compensating for gaps using own vocabulary and grammar knowledge. Then, candidates should be producing extended relevant stretches of language with very little prompting or support and maintain the interaction by asking and responding to questions and suggestions on familiar matters in a simple and direct way. The assessor will award the maximum of six marks for grammar. For this, candidates are expected to maintain a high degree of grammatical accuracy consistently. This means errors are rare, difficult to spot, and generally corrected when they do occur. To award marks for grammar, Candidates are able to show a good command of 
a wide range of grammatical structures and use a wide range of organizational patterns using cohesive devices and connectors. In summary, candidates should be able to communicate accurately, link utterances together using cohesive devices to show logical sequencing of content and convey intended meaning to get good grammar marks. For vocabulary, the assessor will award the maximum of six marks. To get good vocabulary marks, candidates are expected to use a wide range of appropriate vocabulary in order to give and exchange views on a wide range of abstract, complex and unfamiliar topics. Candidates should also be able to convey specific differences in meaning through appropriate choice of vocabulary. In summary, candidates should be able to portray the ability to use appropriate and good choice of vocabulary to convey meaning to get good vocabulary marks. For communicative competence, the assessor will award the maximum of six marks too, and candidates are expected to express spontaneously with little obvious searching for expressions. In summary, candidates should be able to produce naturally flowing speech and sustain a conversation despite hesitation or pauses to make the meaning clear. The candidates too should be able to initiate or start, maintain and close an interaction by effectively design the talk or discussion to achieve mutual understanding during the speaking test. Therefore, candidates are advised to speak using good control of grammar, good choice of vocabulary, and show a very good communicative competence while speaking. Candidates must remember to speak confidently, clearly, and loud enough during the test to let the interlocutor and assessor to hear you clearly in order to award marks. Try not to speak too fast. Pronounce every word clearly. Try not to use unfamiliar accents and be natural while speaking. Boys and girls, some of you might feel you are not able to speak clearly and loudly while wearing a mask during the test. Then you can opt to wear a face shield instead during the test. My suggestion is you can try practicing while wearing a mask at home. If you feel you are not loud enough and clear, then wearing face shield will be a good solution. You can stay safe and do well during the speaking test at the same time. Start your practice at home and be prepared from now. Do not do whatever I have suggested one day before the test. So, start now, do it now, you will definitely speak wonderfully. That's the end of the Speaking Test Introduction Guide video. Here are some of my personal tips. First, do not feel shy to speak. Just speak what you know and be confident to speak clearly. With that, I end with a quote by Indra Novi. 
sit up, sit at the table, and speak with confidence. That's half the battle won. Therefore, confidence will definitely make you be successful. You all can do it. Good luck, boys and girls. See you all soon in another video explaining about the tips and answering techniques for part one speaking test. Bye!